Today in the show we have the MasterCard partnership with Bact, the studies on the digital real offline use, Photoshop announcing an NFT functionality, and more. I'm your host Mauricio Magaldi and this is Block Drops, your weekly digest on blockchain for business. These news are not a form of endorsement, sponsorship or encouragement for consumption and are meant for educational purposes only. This week at Money 2020, MasterCard and Bact announced that they are going to partnership to facilitate for merchants, banks and fintechs in the US to embrace and offer a broad set of cryptocurrency solutions and services. For their customers in turn, they'll experience expanded access to this digital asset ecosystem. BACT will allow MasterCard to uh, enable uh, its uh, ecosystems of partners to use as a crypto as a service type of functionality that will provide access to this crypto capabilities. Through the power of this MasterCard network and the BACT uh, digital assets platform, the partners will be able to offer cryptocurrency solutions to their customers. This will include uh, the ability for consumers to buy, sell and hold the digital assets through custodial wallets that are powered by the backed platform and streamline the issuance of branded crypto and uh, debit and credit cards. MasterCard will also integrate uh, crypto capabilities into the loyalty solution, the points and loyalty solutions that will enable the partners to offer uh, crypto as rewards and create fungibility or interchangeability between loyalty points and other digital assets so consumers can earn and spend rewards in crypto instead of traditional loyalty points and convert one uh, into another and back and forth uh, and, and pay for purchases. Um, now this is not the first endeavor we've we're seeing MasterCard and Visa play a big role into trying to bring the blockchain infrastructure uh, and usability through their own uh, channels. So including backed in the ecosystem in this MasterCard move seems very fitting because this is something that we here at Block Drops have been sort of discussing with you guys for some time now is that UX is the bridge for widespread adoption. And I think MasterCard and Visa are doing a hell of a job not playing the part of the infrastructure anymore, which they do with credit card, but to be the gateway between the traditional uh, ease of use that we become accustomed with uh, credit cards and payments and whatnot and bridging that into the world of cryptocurrency, digital assets, and blockchain infrastructure so that we don't have to go through hoops and ladders to use the balances of our digital assets or the cryptocurrencies that we're holding in specific wallets. And Bact has been doing a lot of work, and we've reported on Bact uh, a couple times here at the podcast as well, of trying to create more use cases with blockchain and digital assets uh, within its ecosystem, partnering with a number of traditional uh, service and finance providers to provide services through the backed uh, wallet. So bringing in MasterCard into the fold is an expert move from someone who's been dealing at the forefront of blockchain adoption in financial services as Bact has been doing. So it, it really pleases me that we're seeing um, the evolution of what are, I'm going to call this the U, crypto UX or blockchain UX in discussion uh, with such big players such as MasterCard. So uh, interesting to see and interesting to see how this evolves because there are a number of loyalty programs around the world. Um, loyalty was one of the earlier use cases for blockchain. But now with tokenization and the widespread adoption that we're seeing more and more of Web 3.0, this has the potential to become an even bigger market. 
The Brazilian Central Bank announced this week that they will be issuing a call for projects starting next week for projects that will participate in the tests for the Digital Real, Brazil's own CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency. The goal is to identify which will be the requirements and solutions that would fit the project uh, demand and scope. On top of that, the central bank announced that they are discussing with MasterCard and Visa, there we go again, and it's very interested in the offline payment solutions that Visa can provide. Uh, that was uh, announced and mentioned by Fabio Araujo, uh, whom we hosted here recently in one of our block talks. Uh, he's the uh, executive of the central bank in charge of the Digital Real uh, program, and he was called by the we have the, the Câmara dos Deputados, which is sort of uh, the, um, the House of Representatives in Brazil. And according to Fabio in this audience, uh, that they will plan to uh, start this innovation lab uh, for CBDC uh, next year in 2021. And the uh, implementation of Digital Real would take place between two and three years from 2022. The audience was a request by the Commission of Control and Monitoring of Financial Services and response to their request for how the credit cards would operate with the digital real. Fabio went on to say that this is a sort of a deeper question, the, that the central bank has been speaking with Visa and MasterCard and see their intention to enter the CBDC market and provide payment services to use in the platforms that they already have, adopt these new technologies and continue to offer services for countries. Uh, Fabio also uh, reminded the, the representatives that the uh, dollar from the Bahamas also runs on the MasterCard infrastructure and reminded them that Visa has a CBDC lab, innovation lab, uh, with a number of projects uh, underway. He completed that they, ha they are uh, interested, the central bank is interested in the visa solution, especially the offline payment, but, uh, but asserted that there are other solutions that could also be viable, including from international startups. According to Fabio, offline solution, solutions are not as mature as the online solutions, although experts point out that the digital real would only be inclusive if it would allow operations in places uh, without internet. As far as banks go, uh, go, Fabio Araujo affirmed that the banks will be able to provide services with bases in new technology that will be available in a form that are still uh, immature in some environments, but the banks are very capable and they will adapt very well to the digital real because they are really fast in adopting new technologies and make good use of these technologies. Now it's interesting to see uh, from a Brazil perspective because we are a country with a huge social economic gap that the regulator and now the legislators are interested in how the digital is going to operate. It has to be a widespread discussion in society because we can't just add a digital real to the market and then forget that we have people that are unbanked that can't have access to that, people that are under the poverty line that can have access to money at all. So it's interesting to see that the central bank is enabling and entertaining these types of discussion. And we're happy to see the progress of this discussion in society. And we'll keep track of this. This is very uh, one of our uh, most interesting topics for us in the podcast. And we'll bring more as we get to know it. Software maker Adobe of the Adobe Reader, PDF Reader fame, and Photoshop fame, and Premiere fame, and all of the nice and shiny things of the internet fame, has announced that they are finally taking the plunge into Web 3.0. Yes, they announced that they are launching, uh, by the end of the month, a system within Photoshop that will enable creators to do, among other things, Proof that the person who's selling an NFT is the person who made it. This functionality is called content credentials and will enable NFT sellers 
to link the Adobe ID with the crypto wallet, allowing compatible NFT marketplaces to show a verified certificate, like a blue check, proving that the art uh, source is authentic. According to Scott Belsky, which is the Adobe's uh, chief product officer, this functionality will be built into Photoshop with a prepare as NFT option launching in preview by the end of the month. Belsky says attribution data created by the content credentials will be live, will live, sorry, on an IPFS system. IPFS, we mentioned here a few times, is the decentralized uh, internet file system, uh, although it's only available in the earth right now. It's the IPFS and it hosts URL and the images associated to an NFT, which is a record on a blockchain where uh, this will be available. And they say that the NFT marketplaces like OpenSea, Rarible, Known Origin, Super Rare will be able to integrate with content credentials to show a dub's attribution information. Now, why this is a big deal right now? One, it sort of have, uh, allows the like, big, big software house such as Adobe to actually sort of move into Web, web 3.0 through the front door. Two, uh, it sort of prevents the overall fraud that it's not widespread but exists in the NFT space. So this is the second. And third, it sort of creates an initial trend because we're seeing NFTs not only for images, but for music, for video, uh, there's uh, Theta, which is a blockchain that is dedicated to media. So what, which other software houses that have softwares that produce media will now be able to jump in on the action and allow their softwares to actually publish an NFT of its kind in the marketplace. So this shortens the path between production and the NFT issuance and that creates a more sort of straight line traceability between the production and the issuance and of course the trading of the NFT making the markets uh, even more secure even more uh, fraud free so congratulations to Adobe on the launch and let's see which is the next mover in this space that will tie up the issuance of NFT into their own softwares. Because the week was packed full of news, here's more. Valve, who recently announced that they're banning games that have NFT or anything crypto, is now getting a letter back from the software gaming companies to revisit this decision. Still on NFT, Binance announced an NFT gaming platform. In parallel, the NFT card game raised 500 million from Paradigm, the crypto fund. Uh, the Economist announced and launched uh, NFT of NFTs of uh, famous covers, sort of what uh, Time Magazine did uh, earlier this year. Hot Wheels announced an NFT collection. Yes, the collectible cards uh, cards uh, are now on NFT. Timbaland, the producer musician, announced remixable NFTs where you can buy the NFTs and remix uh, Timbaland's music uh, and. The report from CryptoSlate uh, measured that almost half of all crypto wallets are connected to games. This is a huge trend indicator. In a very weird piece of news of the week, Facebook renamed its holding company Meta. Well, that is a stab right into the metaverse. So let's see how Meta will be uh, doing uh, in the coming weeks with the announcement of the Facebook Metaverse. 99 a Taxi, the uh, mobility startup in Brazil, announced that they're going to give cash back in Bitcoin. Leaky, the tokenization company also based in Brazil, announced that they're issuing tokens that are backed by uh, Porsche rentals. Interesting. Mercado Bitcoin announced that they did uh, a purchase of a stake in Fingerprint with a, an NFT art um, curator uh, platform and they did that with tokens, yes, with crypto and tokens. 
Uh, Hedera announced that they're uh, sponsoring a project on the Hedera Hashgraph uh, network, which aims to do cannabis streaming. Yes, you heard this right. Cannabis streaming. Interesting read. And on the regulatory space, we saw FDIC, the deposits regulator in the US, announced that they're exploring how banks could hold crypto on their balance sheets. The Financial Action Task Force, based in, in France, announced that they're pursuing the definition of DeFi standards to prevent frauds like the hacks that happened with Cream and other uh, protocols. And Dubai announced that they're investing in a new regulation for investment tokens. Block Drops Podcast is available on Anchor FM, Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcasts, Numis, and iColab. You can reach out to us through Instagram at Block Drops Podcast, on Twitter at Block Drops Pod, and via email blockdropspodcast at gmail.com. Shoutouts today for those who share the links you will find in today's episode notes. Leandro Nunes, Dan Stefanis, Jeff Prestes, Claudia Mancini, Elton Mello, Fabio Chesini, Paul Brody, Daniel Cocchieri, Michael Wagner, Jason Janowitz, Reinaldo Rabelo, and Magnus Soderberg. Also, big thanks to Sandra Heck from MicroLab that now distributes the Block Drops podcast. Thanks for the support. And also to Nitin and Derek from Beyond Bitcoin, who hosted me this week in a very interesting uh, talk about the Brazil state of crypto, digital assets, and blockchain adoption. That's all for today. See you next time. Ciao.